It's hard to compete with puppet with Muppets. It's always good to follow Muppets, right? People are up. You must deal with that a lot. I do, but I'm so sorry they're not here in person. That would yeah. be even better, right? Sherry Weston is the president of Sesame Workshop, the nonprofit behind Sesame Street, um, but also a major innovative force in childhood education around the world, including in some really challenging contexts. And we just met Noor and Aziz, the Rohingya Muppets, um, and we're delighted that they could at least uh, join us virtually today, if not in person, or in Muppet, I suppose. You're right. Um, in a minute, we're going to learn more about Noor and Aziz. But first, Sherry, I was hoping you could just sort of set the stage for us and lay out the scale of the challenge that Sesame Workshop is trying to tackle and why this kind of representation that we saw up here um, is so important to tackling that challenge. I, I'd be delighted. And um, I want to make sure this is working well. But I, um, first of all, I'm so grateful to be here. And I'm always grateful for any opportunity to talk about the depth and breadth of our work because so many people don't understand Sesame's work around the world. Um, you're seeing, you know, Nora and Aziz, you're probably used to seeing uh, Elmo and Big Bird. So I think it gives you a sense of our global reach and the fact that we create local productions really designed to meet the needs of children in their culture, in their language, and reflecting their own realities. And your point about the need, if you think about the origins of Sesame Street, we were created over 50 years ago to see if television could be used to give less advantaged children the same access to early learning, many of whom who didn't have quality early education. So fast forward, uh, a global pandemic, 100 million people displaced around the world, about half of whom are children, and yet less than 3% of all humanitarian aid goes to education. So what we're doing is taking what we do so well and trying to reach young children affected by crisis and conflict with quality early learning. Um, and I think it's you know, really what Sesame was made for. Yeah, uh, it's fascinating for me to think about Sesame Street, um, not just as the show that I grew up with, but as this place that sort of evolves and changes right. um, based on the needs that you're finding with kids in all of these different places around the world. Can you just say briefly a little bit about how that translation process happens as you move from one challenging context to another? How do you determine what kids should be seeing on TV and, and the characters that they should be encountering there? Well, one of the things that I think is important to understand is this work is, yes, it's using mass media. Obviously, today, so much more than television. You know, digital, mobile, every means possible, high-tech, low-tech. But we also partner with organizations on the ground so that we're reaching the most vulnerable children through home visits, through learning centers. So those engaging characters and content are not just in mass media, but in curriculum and learning materials. And you know, what we've found is the needs of young children, the first five years of a child's life are so important. Their brain is developing faster than any other time, and particularly for children who've experienced trauma in those early years. The needs are the same, regardless of geography, but the contexts are very different. So what we've been able to do is take the model of Sesame, you know, creating, adding research, the educational content, the production, and truly localizing it so that we're not just exporting the US version around the world, we're going in and we're starting with local advisors, local educators, research with the children and families themselves who we serve, and creating that Sesame special content with unique, engaging Muppets that children can identify with, with storylines they can relate to, um, and we're bringing those to some of the children in in places where they have no access to quality education. Let's learn a little bit more about how that process played out yep. with Noor and Aziz. I think we have another video to show that goes into a little bit yep. more detail about that. And we get to spend a little more time with them. So if we could cue that up. Right. That would be One, great. two, three. For more than 50 years, Sesame Workshop has harnessed the power of storytelling to bring laughter and learning to children around the world. Sesame Workshop has a long history of helping children build the skills they need to succeed in school and life. Elmo, you have to make sure water is clean before you drink it. We try to hold up a mirror to children's lives, 
always addressing tough issues from a child's perspective and always with the input of local communities. Opposite way. <laughs> In addition to our beloved Sesame Street characters like Elmo and Grover, we also create new Muppets designed to reflect the cultures of the countries where we work. So now I'm going to show you some pictures of a new character that we want to include in the show. As we develop new characters, we gather input from children to understand which characters they think would make good friends. We also consult with caregivers to ensure that storylines reflect their culture, their values, and the hopes they have for their children. With our Welcome Sesame initiative, Sesame Workshop is supporting families affected by crisis, bringing playful early learning and nurturing care to children around the globe. <laughs> In Bangladesh, we've introduced new Muppet friends, Noor and Aziz, six-year-old Rohingya twins who live in a refugee camp in Cox's Bazaar. For most Rohingya children, Noor and Aziz will be the first characters in media who look and sound like them. I am the Noor. And I, Noor by Aziz. When we tested early character designs with Rohingya children, they were excited to see themselves in the character sketches. To create Noor and Aziz, we spoke with Rohingya caregivers to help inform the color and style of their outfits, their personalities and backstories, and their hobbies and favorite games. When we learned how important storytelling is to Rohingya culture, we designed Aziz to be a natural storyteller who loves to use his imagination. <laughs> By engaging with communities and building powerful role models into our storytelling approach, Sesame Workshop continues to tackle some of the toughest topics facing children, always inspiring hope and joy along the way. Thank you so much for showing that. Yeah, of course. Thank you for sharing it with us. It does a much better <laughs> job than I could do in trying to explain. Well, I, for me, it felt like both a deeply nostalgic experience and also a glimpse of my future as the parent of a 14-month-old. And Sherry actually backstage promised to make an introduction Absolutely. to Elmo. So with me. I'm going to be dad of the year um, <laughs> when the time comes. Um, but this was great. I wonder if you could peel back the curtain a little bit more for us. It just seems to me that coming up with stories and characters in these extremely challenging contexts, stories that are going to resonate with kids, but also move them to a more positive place, that's got to be really difficult. Well, well, it is, but it's so inspiring because, you know, these children are dealing with really difficult circumstances. But it says to me we have a long history of tackling some of the most difficult issues from the lens of a child and always in a hopeful way. So when you see Nora and Aziz, and I was in Cox's Bazaar, um, it was my last trip before the pandemic sort of shut down, and we literally showed content on, you know, they don't have access to, to media in the same way, for instance, the Syrian response region. So it's, it's low tech, it's battery operated Pico projectors. But to see children in these BRAC play labs, our partner's BRAC, watching these videos for the first time, and oh my gosh, the, the, the universal appeal of Muppets. I've traveled all over the world, and there is something about these characters that engages children. It makes them um, more powerful teachers. You know, children trust them, and they become very powerful role models. So when you talk about what goes into their characteristics or their storylines, um, so much does. I mean, Nora and Aziz are twins on purpose because we wanted to make sure we had both genders, but at the same time, we wanted to make sure that they were the same age and play is such an important part of learning, playful learning, and that would allow them to play together. If one had been older, typically one cares for another depending on age. So all of this thought goes into the characteristics so they can deliver on the curricular goals. Um, you know, in the Middle East, we created Ahlan Simpson, which means Welcome Sesame in Arabic. The MacArthur Foundation generously funded this work, and we part with the, partner with the International Rescue Committee. And I give you this example because um, in that creation of that content, which is both mass media and, again, home visits, learning centers, but two new Muppets, Basma and Jod. Basma had to leave his home. Uh, excuse me, Jod had to leave his home, becomes best friends with Basma. So we're never going to say Jod is the refugee Muppet. But now you can see the storylines where they become best friends. They're from different places. And there will be so much that goes into those 
um, stories where where Jod is coping with loss, where where we're modeling um, resilience and skills, and also it's so important that this content is also a catalyst for more engagement with adults. We create content that is not just for the child, but in those home visits, you know, is a tool to increase engagement between adult and child, which is the most important thing a child can have to help mitigate the negative effects of, of, of the trauma they're experiencing. Yeah. Well, I know I certainly think of Sesame Street as a, a parent-child bonding vehicle yeah. um, and look forward to that. But Sherry, I can't thank you enough for giving us already. a glimpse into what goes on behind the scenes <laughs> Well, I, I'm so happy Muppet to have universe. that opportunity. So thank you again. Um, and we, we're so proud of this work with Welcome Sesame, and we look forward to partnering with more to reach more children. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.